name is Richard Turner, and I'm a boys' home boy and a boys' home employee. And my name is Gay Turner, and I'm his wife, and I'm also an employee of Boys' Home. In 1965, my mom and dad were going through a pretty rough patch in their uh, married life and they were uh, in the middle of a divorce. And my mom found out about Boys Home through a mutual friend, I believe. And she had done some research here and actually came up here one time to look at Boys Home and see what it was all about. Um, so in October of 65, uh, we came up here on a trip and we got here to Boys Home and she uh, was in the admin building talking to whoever it was, and I guess Mr. Burroughs at the time, and decided it'd be best if she just kind of drove off. <laughs> so she did. I was out on the swing set swing, and the next thing I heard is Mr. Daney going, Turner! I was like, okay, what? He said, come on, let's go. We're going to watch where we're going. He said, we're going to school. Okay, where's my mom? She's gone. So, uh, that was my introduction to Boys Home. Uh, and at first it was, I, I think it was, um, I think it was a good thing at, at first, my first inclination. But at the time you need to understand too that when I was here, there was a hundred boys here. And there was only 13 staff members. There wasn't a lot of love to go around. When you're chasing a hundred boys, under the age of 18, it is, it, it's time consuming. And with only 13 staff members, it's almost impossible. And I see that now, I didn't see that then, okay? So that, I, and so for four years I spent time, I tr tried to get out of here. Uh, every time I'd ask my mom if I could, could come home, she'd always have an excuse or this or that or whatever until I was able to get my dad to get me out of here, but it had to be a court order because my mom had custody. So that created a little bit of a rift in the family for a few years, but eventually everybody got over it and everybody, including myself, because I was very bitter about having been here because I had a very loving family back home and not all the boys here do, as I found out and as I knew from the time that I was here. So when I finally did get out of here, um, I must have said something that made somebody mad because they told me to leave and never come back. And, and I'm all of the you know, ripe age of you know, all the wisdom of a 15 year old, probably more like a 12 year old, but I said, fine, no problem. So I didn't come back for probably two or three years. And I tried to come back up and see some friends and they reminded me of that little statement. They said, Mr. Turner, we told you to leave and don't come back. Now, if you wanna go into Covington and meet your friends, that's one thing, but you can't come up here. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, Time flies forward. Uh, I got married, got divorced, got remarried, and this one too. Yeah, this one was a sticker. <laughs> and so um, we're we're actually moving back to Virginia from Texas so that Gay could go to uh, college at uh, Regent University. And she crosses the we, as we cross the Virginia state line. She says, "Well, you know, maybe you'll have something to do with boys' home now." And so please forgive me, but my words were at that time, it'll be a cold day in hell before I go back to that place. Well, I guess the devil's got underwear, uh, Long John's on, because uh, a couple, three years later, after we got here and got established, I was working at CBN and she was going to Regent and um, Pat Robertson owned some property up in Hot Springs. And so we brought it, uh, some, and he sold the house. It belonged to his family. And so we, he sold the house and we came up here as the maintenance department to pick up all the furniture. Well, we stopped down at the bottom of the mountain after we got loaded up and everything like that. We went to Coochie's for, for dinner. Well, as we're in Coochie's, I just happened to mention to, to our waitress that um, I was a former boy's own boy. And she said, oh, well, I'm dating one. And I said, really? And so we got to, we talked for a few minutes. And she said, yeah, there's a boy's own boy running the place right now. I said, who's that? I'm thinking back some of the guys I knew and I thought, Dear Lord, you know, it's got to be worse than what it was. So anyway, she said it was Donnie Wheatley. Well, I just, Donnie, really? Because Donnie was, 
Donnie was an all-American guy. He was a You hero. know, he really was. And he was always a protector of the little guys. And when I got home, I told Gay, I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to go back up. I want to go back up and see what's going on. So, long story short again, I this came up. This would have been, what, around 88 or 89 when yeah, you came up here to yeah, visit? Yeah, because we started the business not long after. Yeah. But, um, so I came back up here, and Donnie took like three hours out of his day. Explained to me how Boys Home was set up now. Um, walked me around campus. We talked about a lot of different things. Um, it was it was great just reminiscing with him about the, the old days and stuff like that. And, you know, I'd long gotten over my bitterness toward my, towards my mom and toward the previous establishment that was here at Boys Home. But, you know, there was still at an arm's length. I, I didn't really want to be that involved. So, but when I saw Donnie, he kind of turned me around a little bit and I went home and I told Gay, I said, you know what, I want to start, I want to start doing some stuff with Boys Home. And I think I heard a snicker, but I wasn't sure. But, you know, <laughs> so I got, I, we got involved, we started donating money. And then we, uh, when we opened our own business, Rick's Heating and Air down in Chesapeake, we were able to do things that have a lot more influence and a lot more monetary input to Boys Home. And we did, we did a thing called the Great Train Ride. Well, because I had a Harley, we, we, and we used to do a radio show. Well, we coupled up with Train and uh, a few of the local dealers in Tidewater, and we started a motorcycle rally. Well, we ran a motorcycle rally for about five years. And I think we, we raised somewhere between thirty-five dollars and $50,000 for Boys Home during that time. And we split the money between Boys Home and St. Mary's in Norfolk, which was a local charity, they felt it needed a local draw to work too. So and some of those people still support boys. Yes, some of those some of those people that been since night. The first one was when two thousand five, four. I think so. Yeah, something like that. And to this day, some of those people still support Boys Home. And so Donnie, after a few years, Donnie kept bugging me about it. He wanted to start a trades program. He was very, Donnie's always been very uh, uh, visual about the future of Boys Home. And, and I, I guess for somebody to be in the position he's in, it, it takes that foresight to be able to look down the road and see what's coming in the next 100 years, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Because long after Donnie's gone, and long after I'm gone, this place still has to operate. We've been around since 1906, okay? So it, it, it has to keep operating because of what the mission that's here and the ministry that's here. And so anyway, once Donnie started talking about Gay and I coming up here, we started getting the bug. And so we changed our mindset about this whole thing and we started looking at selling our business. And it took, gosh, what? 10 years. 10 years to do it, to get to everything get right. Well, I mean, we were we, we were a fairly busy company and uh, we had you know a few employees and, and stuff like that. And I didn't want to just walk away from it and I didn't want to walk away and not get any of the fruits of our labor that we'd put into it. So we everything came together and in 2014, um, we had set up the company to where it could basically run by itself and a person would, would help us. And so we sold our house, we had a uh, 3,000 square foot house in Chesapeake. We sold that, but we couldn't sell it at a garage sale. We gave away, I think we gave Samaritan House or something, like three truckloads of stuff, which tells you, you don't need all that junk, okay? So anyway, we made the move. We actually bought an RV uh, from a friend of ours in Texas. Yeah, we went we, from a 3,000 square foot house to a 38 foot RV. And we parked it behind the gym. And it has been an incredible ride. And I, I just, you know, and I, I, and I think the good Lord prepared well, my time here. And I told Gay this the other night. I said, you know, I think God prepared my entire life for this based on what happened here. So it was really phenomenal to, to, for that thought to even pop in my head because without it I wouldn't have I mean, there are things happen like I wouldn't have met her uh, and I wouldn't have started a business because we, we worked as a team and so it, it was phenomenal it really was phenomenal for that so that's that's kind of where 
how I got the boys home, and I've been here since 20, we've been here since 2014, and I've been, I've been teaching, and, um, uh, and lately we've been doing. You've been an employee longer than you've been, than, actually, you, than you were yeah. a resident. It's funny too, because I think, I'm not sure, but I'm almost 100% positive that I'm the only person that hangs, that's on the wall of, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame and an employee here because you're not supposed to be an employee and get in the Hall of Fame. You kind of, it's kind of like those art things, you know, where you yeah. got to die before your painting becomes any good. Well, the same thing, you know, with Donnie, Donnie, you ain't gonna put work here and be on the wall too. So I went backwards. So, yeah. well, yeah, I'm on, the, I'm in the Hall of Fame for the, Gay and I are in the Hall of Fame for the train ride and, um, and some other things. But um, I, it was a draw. And anybody that's been to Boys Home has, all you gotta do is just come up here and see the place and be around the boys for a short period of time. Yeah. And have a lunch with us. Yeah. Have a lunch or, or a meal, just spend some time with the boys and listen to them. And no, they're not all happy. They don't all want to be here. They were just like I am. They want to get out of here. But the difference is, it now is that there is a lot of love for these young men here. And we and when I was here, there were no African Americans here. There were no black boys. Okay? It was all white kids. Matter of fact, I was here when the first black guy got here, Buddy Overton, and we were told how to act and what to say and what not to say. And now I look at the diverse culture of Boys Home, and um, I and, and it's just it's awesome that we can reach out to these young men. We actually have young men here from Africa that have come here from Africa to be a Boys Home boy, and I, I just that kind of foresight I wouldn't have even dreamed that back when I was here, but. Donnie did. And that's what made me want to come here and be part of this. And when we got here, you know, we went right into teaching. You know, I thought I was going to be doing HVAC on the hill, maybe, and having a boy go around with me. And we, you know, we uh, went right to school. <laughs> Donnie said, okay, you're going to get your teacher certificate, and I want you that done by February, and I want this done and that done. I went, Wow, okay, that's different. We didn't plan on going back to college in our 60s. <laughs> no, I did not plan on going back to college when I was 60 years old. That was not going to happen. <laughs> but we did, and we got our teacher certificate. And because uh, Donnie wanted this whole thing, this whole vocational program, which has been an awesome program to move forward, they needed somebody certified to be able to do it. So that's why Gay and I went back to college in our 60s and got certified as teachers. Um, and we did learn a lot of things in those courses. That oh yeah, helped us yeah. a lot. And believe me, um, I won't get into in my whole high school career here because I don't want anybody to get inspired the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but I, let's just say I was not a, a, a great student. But when you get on the other side of the desk, it you get to see why they are so passionate about what they do. They the teachers, for the most part, yeah. There's some nutcases out there. I'll give you that. You had I, a few of them. I had a couple of them. Um, but all in all, the people that are here at Boys Home Now, and everybody here, I think every person here, from every person in development, to the cooks, to every staff member, and even the spouses of staff members, mm -hmm. they're in love with these boys. And it shows. They come to us now, and they can get hugs. I never saw one person get a hug when I was here. I never had one person tell a boy up here to love them. Now imagine that. Your entire, you know, some of these boys, like Donnie, from the time he was 11, 12 years old, he was here at Boys Home until he graduated and went to VMI. And I've never seen, I never at the time, was there any love shown on the cell. I never hugged my house parent. Now you can't get a boy not to hug a house parent. And so that has changed. Yeah, there's fewer boys now. but. What an awesome place for these young men, young men to be in that they can be, they can have the kind of opportunities. And it's like I told a young man the other day, yeah, you may go home and you may stay at home. You may never come back here again. But I can tell you one thing, if you go home, you're gonna let a bunch of opportunities pass you by that you wouldn't have anywhere else. If you wanna get into a college, there are enough people that Donnie Wheatley has made friends with over the years that could probably get you in any college you want to go to. I'm not saying Yale or Stanford or anything like that, but I tell you what, VTI is not out of, I mean, VT is not out of limits. Uh, University of Virginia is probably not out of limits. And I know for a fact, VMI has taken several of our boys. So there's so much opportunity for them here now. 
um, and we're teaching on campus. We're bringing young men in here that are three grades behind and they're bringing them in one year. They're getting them up to grade level. Up to grade level. That, that is that's amazing phenomenal. to me. Because it's, we got that one-on-one. -on -one. You know, yeah, the classrooms are small, but imagine if you're trying to learn and trying to get your degree so you can go out in the world and be a better person. Yeah, that's, this is the place to do it for these young men. For me, the challenges was having been a businessman, um, and you know when you're when you're in business, you you can't you don't have time to coddle people because you have a job to do. You have clients that depend on you and things like that. The opposite is true when you get here, and you're trying to guide young men. Um, getting, getting it done. It, yeah. it is different. What yeah. is different is getting the, the job it is done. education and mentoring and uh, discipling and and all of these different things. And instead of just getting the work done, you're trying to get the work done in the young man. One one of the biggest challenges for me was not getting the work done, but teaching and teach and bringing somebody along as I, as as I did things, and not just in the classroom but out here too. Um, Instead of just, you know, saying, hey, look, you know, I'm sorry, but I got to let you go. You don't have that option here. You, you, so you got to, you have to dig your heels in. I got into a, uh, a altercation with a young man here one time. Verbal. Uh, yeah, it was verbal. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but we didn't talk to each other for a couple of days. And he was pretty mad at me and I was pretty mad at him. But I didn't have the option not to deal with him. So I went to him and I called him by name and I said, look, I said, we need to, we need to get past this because I need you, I need to be able to teach you things I, I, and I, I need you to be able to learn things and we can't while we're upset at each other. So I had to step up and do that. And I think that was a huge challenge because, you know, I raised two boys, we raised two boys and, you know, took them through their teen years. and. If you've ever done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that headstrong and, you know, my way or the highway kind of thing. And, it, you know, they're going to buck everything you do. They're going to they're gonna question every motive you have, you know. If you're well, doing your job right. Yeah, if you're doing your job. Well, why is the sky blue? I don't know, because it is, you know. <laughs> well, I don't like it. Well, sorry. <laughs> uh, but the, I think that was a huge challenge for me. Was there, was there anything different with you? Did, did you have a... The hard part for me was um, occasionally a, man, a young man will stay here and he'll leave sooner yeah. than we think he should. And I remember the first couple of kids that we, we call it, we lost them. Now, I guess there were some people that looked at you leaving early because you didn't graduate from no, high graduate school from, from boys here. home. And I can tell you the benefits that he got while he was here. but. When they would leave early, you would feel that sense of failure very personally. What could I have done differently? Um, could I have reached them? Is there anything else that I could have done? Because you know what they're going back into. It's not going to be better than what they have here. And um, to me, it was a real challenge to be able to put that aside and remember who we still had to focus on here. And um, the, the one thing that we have seen is that each young man that comes here, he just needs one adult to bond with, yeah. to, to really, because it's got to be more than a, um, it's got to be more than just doing the schoolwork and following the rules. It's about relationships. There, it's about relationships. Yeah. And uh, in our business, we, we learn things called relationship selling. And basically what we're trying to do is sell them on a good life for themselves. Yeah. And we're trying to show them you have a choice. And, to re and reasoning with a 15-year-old is not easy. They, Like I said, they can out-reason you seven ways from Sunday. <laughs> out-argue you. I mean, yeah, maybe not yeah, out-reason out you, you, but, but yeah. they can out-argue you. But, you know, and the thing about it is what Gay said was exactly right. Because, you know, being that we are a family here, we socialize with one another. Mm -hmm as well because we're up here on the hill. I mean Covington is not your mega metropolis kind of a city, you know. 
Not a lot, um, so they, you know, they roll the streets up at eight o'clock or whatever. But when we socialize with one another, if, if the young man has left the hill, that's that takes up most of the talk of the evening. How's this guy doing? He had a problem last month. What's he doing? How's this young man doing? And this is what we talk about. And so it goes deep. It really does. The love for these young men goes deep. And the thing that Donnie told me was, he said, Rick, you're not going to get everyone. Yeah, the, the expectation, I remember we were, he was driving us somewhere, and um, Donnie Wheatley can say a whole lot in a few words. Yeah. And we're driving along, and we're talking, I mean, I don't remember who we were heartbroken about at the moment, but it was yeah. one of the first ones. And uh, I, I said, I just really... You grieve. Yeah, you grieve. You grieve. You really them. do. You grieve when they leave. And, um, you know, Donnie said, is it your expectation that you're going to be able to save every one of them? And... That's a large statement. It really is. And I I knew the answer to that was, that's not a realistic expectation. But, you know, you never underestimate the power of one seed that you planted. Yeah. And and we have seen young men that left early that came back and the funny thing is to watch them come back to the people that were the hardest on them. Yeah. And that's true. see them come back to that house parent that, you know, kept their foot they, up there. They rear drive they drive on the hill. Yeah. They drive up on the hill with their new spouse or new girlfriend or maybe a spouse and a baby. Yeah. And the first person they go see is the one that was riding their butt all the time. Yeah. Now doesn't that tell you something? I mean, it's it's a good thing. And I'm not saying, but they do it with love. They do. Because they wouldn't come back if they weren't loved. But I know, you know, when a young man can say, that person did this to me, but I know they did it because they love me. And that's what they come back to because so many of them don't have that in their homes. And it's so difficult to, actually some of them don't even want to, it's like they hold you at a distance because they, they're not sure of your intentions. And you have to really, that's why the relationship up here really has to be a good thing. You have to really work on them and get and make sure that they trust you and that you respect them. You know, today, when I was a young man, you earned respect, okay? And But today, I think kids come out of the womb thinking, hey, you better respect me. You know, it's like, okay, well, that's a little backwards, but you need to earn it first, but... Let's, let's see if I can work in from your angle a little bit. And so that's that's kind of one of the main challenges with some, I think. But God love them and these people that are up here. It's such a blessing to see how folks up here know that this is a ministry. This is not a job. This is a ministry. And if you're thinking you're going to come up here and make a ton of money or whatever, you're coming up here and your only job, if you're here for 25 years and you reach one person, that's one person you didn't lose. Or you planted seeds in the lives of 30 or 40 that you, yeah. know, you don't and you don't know when know. it's going to come around. You don't even know. I, we had one young man come back, and I, the whole time he was in our class, he was one of our second-year students, I believe. And um, he, the whole time he was in there, he had the too, too cool for school attitude. He was sitting back there, looked like he was not focused at all. And he came back here and spoke at chapel. It turns out... He went to work in the electrical trades. And so did his brother. And so did his brother. Who was a student of ours two years later. And we're at the back of chapel listening to this young man talk. And he said, uh, those people right there, uh, Turners. And, and I think, I don't know what, my, my, face, what my face looked like. <laughs> but, but he started laughing. He said, yeah. <laughs> he just, there was this moment there that went back and forth between us. And so just because you don't see the evidence of reaching them at the time, yeah. you don't underestimate the fact that you could have. Yeah. As far as um, funny moments or, or really good times, we had a, a young man named Anthony, and um, we every, every twice a year, a boys home buys uh, trout and stocks to creep for the boys to go fishing in, which is really cool. And um, a lot of these guys have never gone fishing. Yeah, a lot of them have never fished. We have folks coming over here from the Greenbrier that they volunteer their time to come over and teach you them know how the to guys fly that fish. They, they might charge thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're charging clients to... at the Greenbrier <laughs> mega bucks to fish. Well, anyway, we, the truck, we knew the truck was coming. So, Gay and I being in the trades class, I said, Well, 
I, they, sometimes they just drop them off the bridge. And so I got the bright idea, well, let's build this contraption to slide the fish into the river using <laughs> some big green pipe. So we put two of these pieces of pipe together and cut a hole in the top, and our class was having a good time doing it. And we put a, uh, we took, we cut out a tote and put a tote on top of it. We went down to the creek. I brought a generator down and I brought a water pump. And we were pumping water up out of the creek and sending it down this chute. It was like a flume at water country. I don't know. And see, the kids so, get to build that. We, we made them figure yeah, out they, how to do it. Yeah, they're the ones that had to build yeah. it. They came up with the idea and, the and, and constructed it. Anyway, Anthony <laughs> is down there and the first, <laughs> The first fish that came out of there, man, this kid just busted out laughing. He was just having the best time. <laughs> well, that night, uh, and, and whoever it was posted it on Facebook, that night his mother called one of the house parents, and she said she was just blubbering on the line. Crying. Yeah. And it, she couldn't, and the house parents were like, are you okay? What's the matter? What's the matter? Did somebody die, you know? <laughs> she said, I've never seen him laugh like that. She said, and that's what made me know that my son was in the right place. Yeah. I mean, is that, that's just incredible. <laughs> and man, if that don't get you, you're dead. <laughs> you have ice water in your veins. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I uh, remember another time when we, uh, we were here the first year, and there was a big snowfall that oh, yeah. year, and it stayed for a long time. And so uh, we had a big hill out behind. We have a staff residence down at the bottom of the hill. Uh, two staff residences and then up at the top uh, it's it's a good clear shot and it's a long hill and one of our um, except for the brick wall at the bottom except for the <laughs> brick wall at the bottom yeah and uh, one of our one of our old neighbors from Chesapeake who had been a long time supporter and donor to boys home sent the boys some inner tubes for snow tubing and uh, She's a Navy vet and an uh, awesome person, and she really believed in the mission that we yeah. have here. And so she sent them the inner tubes, and we were going down that hill, and I had the bright idea that I needed you to. Were gonna do I was going to need to go down that hill. And um, so anyway, even though against his judgment. Yeah. <laughs> I go down to the bottom of the he hill. He goes to the bottom yeah. of the hill, and I, I go it. down there, and all of a sudden I hit the midsection of the hill that had actually thawed and refrozen. And that midsection, your speed picks up about three times <laughs> over what you're doing. I had to and basically throw myself in front of her to keep her from running into the house. So almost, we, did, we did have a good life. I almost over that ran one. into. Well, I thought. I, I know I was about 50 yards from him, and I thought we're both going to end up in the hospital. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was screaming, but, but we. You know, the, remember we, we made had, it that safely. night. That night we went out, and um, I got rolls of toilet paper and soaked them in diesel fuel and put them on top and of put them holes. on sticks and went around and lit them all we had uh, kind of like you see on, on the ski resorts yeah kind of like and, nighttime and it was kind of it was so cool and the boys the boys had a great time the boys had a they, great time they loved that. i mean it was it was great in fact those snow days were were so much fun we um we made snow cream yep they've never some um, of them have never had snow cream before and so they and I ran down to the store and got all the ingredients for snow cream, came back up here and made a tub of snow cream. <laughs> and everybody got to eat their fill of that. That was that was And really we fried cool. them fish and hush puppies. Yep, we fried them fish and hush puppies. Yeah, we did. And we so, just they I mean we got a standing ovation over that one. Yeah, yeah, we walked that down to Down Hall. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> so, so that was fun. And and the the kids are just um, they really show you that they appreciate things. As far as leaving boys home, it you know, and it's a cliche I know, but it is bittersweet. I, I, Gay and I, you know, we've we've worked our, and I'm not saying nobody else does, trust me, um, doesn't rather, but you know, we've worked, we've owned our own business, we've been up here for six years now. We would like to do some things, uh, some travel, and things like that that we want to go do. And right now, I think it's a good time for us to do it. We, we both felt almost exact, exactly at the same time that, and, and we try to listen to God. We felt like he was saying, okay, you've, you've done what I called you to do. So. We, we actually knew there would be a day when that last kid came through that was ours. And, you know, yeah. and we, we really felt that way. 
And when we met this last class, there was just something there. And it was it, almost all four of them. It was almost all four of them. They were the last kids. We just knew, I don't know how to explain it to you, but that sense that, and, and we spend a lot of time trying to listen, not yeah. talk, but listen. And um, You wouldn't think so from this interview, I know. Yeah, we wouldn't think that, but we, we actually do listen. And we felt at the same time, both of us just looked at each other and said, this may be it right here. This yeah. this may be the one. But the thing we know is that we're going to continue to stay in touch. We were in touch before we came up here as teachers. In fact, one of the young men we met years ago, um, he was five, six years old. Yeah. And uh, we watched him over the years grow up here at Boys Home, become a house parent. And he has just left. He's got a wife and family now. And and everything and um they just moved out to Washington and, last and week we met him when he was in kindergarten yeah, and uh followed him his entire career at boys home and this is like the third group that we've seen grow up like that and so to to see that is a wonderful thing because he's he's gonna be he's gonna be in great shape the, another thing that i'm very proud of is the fact that um the friends that we made here and the people that have influenced us and hopefully the ones that we've helped influence and try to be a help to. Um, I, I think of myself a lot of times as, as a helper and, um, and, and helping people do, fix things. And that's just been something I've done my whole life. And the other thing is that, and I told you before about how people, when they get up here, they just fall in love with boys' homes. And one of my friends from Tidewater, uh, Louis Surratt, and his wife Sandy, uh, actually Sandy used to be our office manager in, in Chesapeake. And I asked, uh, Lou came up here and spent a week of his vacation when he was working for another company. And he put a kitchen in Darlin, they were remodeling Darlin Cottage. And uh, we did the HVAC, me and my guys at the time, and Lou came up and spent a week putting in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. yeah, on and, his vacation time. Yeah, on his vacation time. From that day forward, all he could do was make process or, or do things to try to get up here. That's all he wanted to do. Well, he's here now, and he's doing—he's doing, he's doing great things, amazing things for Boys Home. I mean, he built the altar and the cross up there yep. at the top of the mountain. And, and the other one is my best friend Rick Hudson, uh, who's—I mean, it, it, this—it was such a blessing to have him come up here because of his knowledge and the things that he brings to the table for Boys Home. He's filming this interview right now. And I don't think there's anybody that I know in my life is more qualified to do what he does. And the fact that he's here and running our Christmas tree farm, those are two people I brought up here, uh, that we brought up here, that I feel like it, they they're, it's gonna, for boys they're gonna be a real blessing for boys home. And it, believe me, I know a lot of folks and I can't think of anybody better to be up here. So, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've learned tons, tons of stuff about human nature. And we're going to still come back and do a crawfish oh, boil. Yeah, yeah we're going to. Um, we gonna do a crawfish back. boil for the boys every May, yeah. and, and we just have an absolute blast. And uh, I think it was fun watching young men that had never thought about eating something like a crawfish. Yeah. To uh, We get them shipped in from Louisiana and, um, and about 150 pounds of yeah, them. Yeah, that's them something up. that Rick and I, so we, good. we put that on personally. So. But I'm coming back, uh, I know I'll be back in uh, to the tree farm in uh, November to play Santa Claus. And that's why he's working so on the beard. I'm working on the beard there, make sure I get that. I wish I had more hair, but <laughs> anyway. The hat covers you. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank God for the hat. Yeah. Anyway, that's, um, that's about it. I just want to thank all the staff and uh, and the boys. Oh, yeah. It's been a great. These. <laughs> it's been awesome. You better cut that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a ride. Yeah. You know, like with Harley, it's not the destin it's not the destination, it's the ride. Yeah, it's the journey. That's it. And the journey here, when you see a young man headed the wrong way on a one-way street, 
It is life. And you actually experience that moment where you watch him make the decision on his own to turn that course around. It does something to you that I don't know too many things that could motivate you more to keep wanting to support this place. If I wanted to, if there's anything I could think of I want people to know about Boys Home is that we're here, we do a great job. We love them. We love them. The staff loves them. And um, like your own kids, you, they have their moments. <laughs> yeah, you want to choke the snot out of them. And, and you have your own moments, too. And uh, But raising these characters will develop your character. Yeah, I don't know. And um, so anyway, that's uh, I, I just want people to know that this is money well spent when you invest here. Um, we plan on making a lot of contacts. Uh, the man that bought our business uh, believed in this place enough to where, I mean, that business gives this place $100 a week every week and has since we sold it to him. And he believed so strongly in what we were doing. Yeah. And he supported us back when we did the fundraisers way back when. So um, I just invite anybody to come up here, spend a, spend a couple of meals with the guys in the dining hall when we get off of the pandemic restrictions and we can, uh, you know, we can get back together again. That's, we, we miss seeing the guys in the dining hall. And uh, that's something that, that is a, that's like a family time. Yeah. And we miss that. But, um, but we've, these kids have coped well with yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, they have been very I, mature about I, it. I, I think they've been more mature than sometimes we have. You know, they just really have not been nearly as impatient as we were. And the ones that stayed here, some of them didn't even go home. Young yeah. man that worked with Rick. Yeah, we um, just finished uh, doing Hudnall College, uh, College. College, or Hudnall Infirmary actually, and uh, had, uh, we put in two air, air conditioning systems there, and Bailey worked with me the whole summer. Never, I mean, had a great time. These so, kids have a resume now. Yeah, no kidding. It's really good. This our, that's how COVID affected us. In fact, uh, we're we're just really it helped our class because yeah. they had lots more got, field time. We got out of the classroom and got into the field, and they got hands on. And it makes all the difference in the world. So, so they're leaving with a resume. Yeah, they are. Yep, and. Um, but keep us in your prayers. Keep yeah. boys home in, in your prayers, and uh, that we, as a group, hear from God and hear what the how the mission unfolds in in the next century. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. A successful man has to start somewhere. For many. That somewhere is Boys Home of Virginia. To learn more, visit boyshomeofva.org. If you would like to make a tax-deductible gift, please visit givetoboyshome.org. Remember, it's always a good time to help a child.